Dakota pushing it to five. They win set number four, 25 to 23. Hey Coyote fans, welcome back into another edition of the Coyote Volleyball Show presented by Scooters Coffee. It's great to have you for another show. The Coyote Volleyball team officially in conference play. The Coyotes opened up conference play Saturday night at Omaha. Unfortunately, didn't go the way the Yotes had hoped. And to talk about it, we're joined by the head coach of the Coyotes, Leon Williamson. Coach, you knew going into that matchup it was going to be an absolute battle and really it was, especially three of the four sets. I mean, it was runs on both sides of the net and uh, really hard-fought battles in a 3-1 in a loss. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I, I think the game of runs was definitely um, the thing that we saw is we, we actually came out with an early lead in set one. Um, they tied it up pretty quickly um, back, and we just kind of saw that go back and forth throughout the match. And I do think part of it is uh, the beginning of conference. You know, we actually saw that last year as well in, in our first couple matches. Um, we were just able to come out on the winning side last year, so I don't think it was as evident in some ways. But um, the, in a lot of ways, it was a game of errors. You know, and I do think volleyball is, um, I mean, we say it all the time within our own gym. Volleyball is a game of errors. We just have to limit ours and make sure that we're giving ourselves the best chance to have success. Um, but it was really evident whether it was the service errors, hitting errors. Um, you know, we had some, you know, missed cue um, discipline issues as well, but um, we still gave ourselves a chance, you know, in one, two, and three, um, we were either tied or actually ahead in some of those sets in the twenties. And we just weren't as good in the twenties as what we've been in the past. You talk about volleyball being a game of errors, and you've talked a lot this year about some errors. The bad news is there's errors. Mm -hmm. The good news is that feels like a cor correctable thing. Yeah, I do. I, and I actually think a lot of it, it wasn't a skill thing. It wasn't a, the ability thing. It was more so um, we had a lack of discipline in some areas. And that's something that we're really working hard to be right now is just one of the most disciplined teams. And we just didn't see that on Saturday out of ourselves. Um, but I, I do think that there's a few that we could absolutely limit. Um, you know, even for example, like service errors don't stress me out until they get to be too many or the timing of it. You know, and there were times that we actually had runs going. We got them into more of an uncomfortable situation and we bail them out with a misserve you know so when we start to get them on a run um, like we have to make sure that they have to bail themselves out you know that they have to get themselves to to right the ship instead of us giving them points on the back end but um, I, I really do feel like there's a there's a lot of things that we can correct hopefully pretty simply um, and that's what we're going to work on this week. And it continues to be that word we've used a lot this year growth mm -hmm. this team continues to grow um, players that have been on the team but are seeing more court time, they're going to continue to work through some of this stuff. Yeah, and they have to. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's it's one of those things where this program is just used to winning. Um, you know, we've we've won a lot in the preseasons. We've won a lot through conference play. Um, and it's so early that we got to make sure we're not pushing the panic button, you know, right now. But um, there are just people that are in bigger roles, and they haven't had to take some of the swings or had to take some of the um, – or pass in some certain situations, make the defensive play when it comes down the stretch. And they are right right now, you know, so um, we're going to be very different in three more weeks than what we are right now. And, and honestly, looking back at it, we're very different than where we were when we started preseason. So there's, I think it's important to be able to look at that and see the growth that we are, you know, having as a team and make sure that we continue to buy into that so that again, two weeks, three weeks, six weeks down the road, um, we're exactly where we need to be. We saw at the beginning of the non-conference a little slow out of the blocks for maybe what our fans had hoped mm -hmm. for and, and what, as you said, they're, they're kind of used to. But we saw what this team can be with winning five consecutive mm -hmm. matches, a stumble in some of like season. This is a long season of conference volleyball. How do you keep your team just not even worried about anything else going on outside of them, but just within your locker room? Look, we can get on a run at any point ourselves. I mean, I think it's important to talk about it. You know, I think it's important not to skirt around the issue. And we have to um, we have to continue to remind them of those things. And, you know, honestly, and sometimes it's reminding ourselves of those things as well. But um, we will be fine. You know, we will get better this week. We will be better this weekend. And um, in the end, again, we need to be the best team we can be at the end of the season. And we've talked about that in past years, too, even when we were winning. You know, so it, it's, not an, it's not a foreign concept for them to hear that from us. Um, but I think sometimes, like, the way we act, the way we react as coaches is going to definitely, I would like to think, pay off with our team as well. What were your, your biggest positive takeaways from the weekend? 
Um, I mean, again, I, I think we can play at a very high level. You know, we saw it happen, um, whether it was certain games, whether it was certain rallies, um, and it's really just the consistency of it. But I really think that just comes from experience. But, um, you know, we will, we can continue to be a very good blocking team. You know, we can be a good defensive team. Um, we just saw ourselves probably going to stretches a little bit more where there was a few more hesitations than what I would like to see. But uh, hesitation is something you can get rid of, um, in my opinion. So we make that small change, and I think we're right back to where we were. I know you'd said you were hoping that some of the Coyote fans would make their way to Omaha. I saw they listed over 2,000 in attendance, so pretty good atmosphere. Did you see the Coyote Faithful down there? Oh, absolutely. You know, we did some people make, see, see some people make the track, and um, it was a great environment, you know, and a lot of people asked me, you know, why did we play at 7? You know, why did we play that night? Was that okay with us? And um, one of the things I've been pretty adamant about is growing the sport, you know, and I think that that starts within, obviously, ourselves. It starts within our league, and we've got to be willing to adjust to be able to make that happen. So if we can get over 2,000 people, you know, at a, at a match, even if it is on the road, I want to do that because it helps, it helps the sport it helps our league, it helps us continue to move forward. So I would rather play in that type of environment than an empty gym, you know. So um, it was good. Uh, I'm, I'm glad the sport continues to grow. Um, and now hopefully we can get that at our home place this weekend. I know you play a lot of uh, night matches, especially during the week. But how about on a weekend? Is it hard, especially being on the road? You're sitting around in a hotel a lot of the day. You're trying to use a lot of the day and find ways to keep maybe the minds engaged. Well, the nice thing is for this one, we didn't leave until the day of. Um, that's pretty normal for us for the for the closer ones. So um, I think it gives them a little bit of extra time, whether it's to sleep in, do some homework. But I mean, there's definitely some of that on the road. Um, you know, we get up and do some mobility, get them moving a little bit. But I also think our players do a really good job of staying in tune to what they need school-wise too. So I think sometimes it's nice for them just to have a little bit of extra time to focus on their studies and then obviously once we get to volleyball time refocus onto that aspect of it. Well, Summit League season will continue this week. The Coyotes are at home for the first time in Summit League play this week. They'll take on Kansas City and Denver. We'll talk to Coach Williamson about those matchups coming up a little later in the show. Coming up next, assistant volleyball coach Michael Rundy who spent a long time at USD. He'll join us. We'll talk about his role and how he continues to grow with South Dakota Volleyball. This is the Coyote Volleyball Show presented by Scooter's Coffee. The Coyote Volleyball Show is brought to you by Scooter's Coffee. Scooter's Coffee. Amazing drinks. Amazing people. Amazingly fast. Back in the Coyote Volleyball Show presented by Scooter's Coffee. We're talking South Dakota Volleyball. Just opened up Summit League play this weekend at Omaha, you heard from head coach Leanne Williamson. We're joined now by associate head coach Michael Rundy, who's been in the program a while now at, at South Dakota. We'll get to all of that, but obviously this season right now, uh, the team off to a 6-6 six and six start, just, just ended a five-game win streak. So some roller coasters. What are you seeing out of this group right now? Yeah, I think every match we continue to learn about ourselves um, and what we need to do both as a team and individually to be successful. Um, expectations are always going to be high um, with this group and with this program, um, but at the same time, I think we're starting to realize what's going to make this team successful, and um, we're doing that both through wins and losses. You know, I think a lot of our fans see the different coaches out on the floor. What's your, your specialty where you spend the, the most of your time with? Uh, this year, uh, just with the, our staff evolving, um, I'm working a lot more with our setters um, and helping them train technically and tactically and talking about decision making and what they're doing um, both in practices and matches. Um, and then I always love trying to coordinate our defense as well. So how do we um, slow down or stop um, the other team um, at any point in the match? You've been a big part of this program, watching it continue to build into uh, some great success that, that you've been on the bench for. When you look at your time at, at USD, how has your role with the program e evolved in that time? Uh, yeah, I mean, I still remember being a GA and being 22 and not really knowing what was happening that first year. Um, that first year was a blur, but um, since then, um, obviously having a, a vocal role in practices and matches, and um, I enjoy the recruiting aspect of things very much. Um, but then I think just with anything, whether it's community engagement or fans or camps, um, just really taking that part of the role very seriously and trying to trying to do what we can to make this program the best that it can be. 
you know, we talk all the time about the growth of teams, but it's also important to grow interest and fan base, and you've watched a lot of this. I mean, you've mm -hmm. seen matches not played in the Sanford Coyote Sports Center, where they are now. Uh, how do you describe the changes to uh, USD athletics that have helped the volleyball program? Yeah, um, so remember those matches in the den um, when marketing essentially couldn't do their job because if too many people showed up, they'd be turning people away. And, um, you know, I think we um, have a very good administration and marketing um, team in place that, um, you know, very much values the product that we put out on the court and trying to continue to grow um, that fan base. And so, um, you know, with the the, it was perfect timing moving into the arena when we did. It was the year that we won our first regular season championship, and so many people that year. Um, and since then, I've just heard countless stories of I've never been to a volleyball game, and now I'm coming back, or I'm going to get season tickets. And and that's the exciting thing because if you look at the trends nationally, volleyball is definitely booming. Um, there's so many rec attendance records being broken night after night within individual schools or conferences or nationally. And so um, I definitely feel like uh, USD volleyball is a part of that. Yeah, and it continues to grow the fan base we've seen obviously attendance records and some really good crowds in some of the bigger matchups in the mm -hmm. atmosphere how has the atmosphere changed in your opinion i mean you're down on the floor you get all that noise funneled down to you on the floor how, how has that changed throughout your time here yeah the numbers certainly grown but i just think the that the way our fans engage in the match has grown as well. You know, if the other team gets on a two or three point run, our fans start to get a little uneasy and start to cheer and start to stand up. And so um, I definitely am biased, but I think it's a tough place to play. Um, I still remember that comeback against South Florida earlier this year. And when we tied that thing at 14-14, I don't know if I've ever heard the arena that loud. And so um, the Coyote Crazies continue to grow. Um, our season ticket holder base continues to grow and it definitely has an impact on the match. As we talk about the growth of volleyball, we're seeing more and more volleyball matches on linear TV. We saw, obviously, down the road, the Volleyball Day in Nebraska and what that did. Uh, so you're seeing nationwide the growth of, of volleyball. How important is that, not only for right now, but just as we continue to build these programs and recruit uh, around the region? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's huge. Um, you know, I think the the sport in general is the, the most popular team sport for girls in the country right now at the high school level. And um, I just think at, at every step of the way, if it continues to get a little bigger, um, that it can be the premier um, women's sport in the country. And um, by no means do we feel like volleyball has has to be the best or is the best because we're not competing against women's basketball or soccer, um, but we're just trying to, to grow the women's athletic side of it. And um, certainly we're at a place that has long valued um, our female student athletes. You've stayed here long enough. It, it probably feels like home now, but a lot of it I'm sure has to do with uh, head coach Leanne Williamson, who has been a part of the program for a long time. Mm -hmm. What is that relationship right, like <laughs> and working you know, for her, uh, someone who has really taken this program to the next level? Yeah, um, I would say it's a big reason you know, why I've stayed as long as I have. Um, me and her, we get along extremely well. Um, I think we're very good friends off the court, um, but I think that's developed from our working relationship. Um, there's just a lot of trust there. Um, and as much fun as we have, we still have the hard conversations. And I think we're, that's where that ultimate trust comes in, just because um, we definitely know what the other is thinking or saying or going to do. Um, and you definitely learn that over the course of, of a decade. And having a couple new assistants, I think it's definitely shown us even more how much we are on the same page. Um, and especially about the big stuff. Um, she will tell you we don't agree about everything, about how we want to go about the day to day or what practice looks like or you know but all the important things that need to align um, they certainly do. Do you just slide those things then into the workout routine or do you just say yes ma'am and move on? <laughs> uh, yeah it's definitely a it's definitely a side eye when either of us says something because we know how the other is going to react or what the other one's thinking and I think it used to be well or maybe and now it's just we we don't have any issues telling each other what what the other one thinks. Big matchups coming up this week as you continue Summit League play, Kansas City and Denver. They're the only two teams right now uh, with a, without a loss in, in the league. What do you want to see out of this group this week to get uh, things back on track? Yeah, first and foremost, just getting back to the things that make us successful. Um, and during the Omaha match, um, there was a times where we just we felt like we lost ourselves a little bit, and we don't want an environment, a team, a conference, 
match or anything like that change who we are. Um, and so definitely just getting back to what makes us good. And, um, you know, that team that just was on a five match, win, five match win streak is still all in the locker room, you know. So um, just having that belief and that confidence and then take advantage of being home. Um, you know, we had a tough uh, couple weekends on the road in non-conference and a, a great weekend at home was exactly what we needed to kind of spring us forward. And so, um, and at the same time, just understanding that our league's going to be um, – for lack of a better term, pretty wild this year. I think you're going to see a lot of upsets. I think you're going to see a lot of people um, winning at home, um, you know, teams at the bottom of the league, beating teams at the top of the league. And so just understanding how important every match is going to be and really taking it match by match. Well, we're excited for it. It should be a fun week of Coyote Volleyball here at home. Michael, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Yep, thank you. All right, that's Michael Rundy, the associate head coach for Coyote Volleyball. When we come back, Coach Leanne Williamson rejoins us. We'll preview the matchups coming up this week against Kansas City and Denver. This is the Coyote Volleyball Show presented by Scooter's Coffee. The Coyote Volleyball Show is brought to you by Scooter's Coffee. Scooter's Coffee, amazing drinks, amazing people, amazingly fast. Back in the Kyle Volleyball Show presented by Scooter's Coffee. Joined by the head coach of the Kyle Volleyball team, Leanne Williamson, her team back home this week. A couple of matchups against uh, Kansas City on Thursday, Denver on Saturday. The two teams that are off to a 2-0 start in the league, the only two teams, by the way, off to an 2-0 start in the league, now come into your building in the Sanford Kyle Sports Center. And, and they got to this very differently. Denver, who you'll play on Saturday, got sweeping victories over the North Dakota schools. Kansas City riding high, five set winners over Omaha and South Dakota State. So uh, they've got a lot of a momentum on their side coming in here Thursday. Yeah, I mean, two great opponents. Um, you know, glad we'll be back in our in our home arena and play in front of our fans. But we're also excited to play some high level volleyball again. I mean, that's what we want. We've talked about the league um, having that ability this year, and just that every team we play is going to be a really good match. So um, looking forward to to those challenges coming up on Thursday and Saturday. You look at Thursday's match against Kansas City. This team obviously is on a high note right now and mm -hmm. a team that's playing very competitive. Yeah, they are. Um, I watched both of those matches, and um, I think they're playing some really good volleyball and will create some different challenges for us. But I also think there's some things that we can take advantage of you know, as well. So um, we always expect a really great matchup with Kansas City. Um, it, it's been a pretty um, good rivalry in, in, a, in a lot of ways as well. So um, I expect no difference going into Thursday. How much has them, obviously they're, they're still relatively new to the league and coming back to the Summit League, how much has just their addition for the sport of volleyball been a good thing for the league? I mean, it's been great because they're good, you know, and anytime we can bring in good teams um, and and add in two more matches that we know are going to be very high level for us, um, it's it's good for the league as a whole. So, um, you know, they were, they were good before that. We played them right before they got back in the league, and we've always had a really good matchup with them. And um, I think it's, a, it's definitely a matchup that our players are definitely excited for each year as well. Denver, who you play on Saturday, I know when the preseason poll came out in the league, people, if they follow Summit League Volleyball, you may have scratched your head a little bit about where they were situated on the preseason poll, but there's a lot of unknown maybe coming into the season with Denver, but it's Denver. They've been good year in and year out for a long time. Yeah, I mean, we actually said that of just Denver being um, put – lower um, in the list was surprising to us but I just think that they people just didn't know what to expect out of them new coach you know they had some of their main players transfer out and uh, they obviously brought some good players in and and still had some really good keys coming back so I think it was more of the unknown that put them there but um, Denver's Denver they're always going to be good they're always going to challenge everybody in the league so um, again to start off with you know in, in my opinion probably three of the the top teams in some ways in the league is definitely a challenge but um, one that we're ready for. You'll play Thursday night and then the Saturday matchup quite opposite from last week. It'll be an early afternoon contest this week against Denver. So uh, very uh, different matchups, probably more yeah. than norm for, for your team this this season playing on the weekend. For sure. Um, it is our alumni weekend as well, so we're excited to welcome um, them back into the CSC and um, be able to catch up with them after the match. But they've always wanted a really good match on, on alumni day, so they get they get it this year. How much fun is that bringing back some of the uh, some of the, the individuals that you have coached, even as an assistant coach before mm -hmm. you became the head coach, and even the people who were here before that, kind of 
building the blocks, if you will, of the program to where it is today. Yeah, I mean, the people that are coming back are, you know, obviously the main people that have gotten the program to where it is now, um, whether it was back when I first started as an assistant or, you know, being more recent years as, as the head coach. But it's always fun to catch up with them, share stories, and maybe hear some things that we didn't know about all the time um, while they were here. But um, we've just, we've always said it, we just feel like we have good people within our program. And um, obviously our alumni coming back are a big part of that. And um, it's always nice to just kind of relive the glory days in some way. You know, for them, it's exciting. They come back. They'll be excited to, to see some of the people maybe they haven't seen uh, in a few years. How about for your team, knowing the alumni are, are coming back for a match? Do, do they feed off of that? Do they get excited for things like that? I mean, just understanding what was here before them. That's a great question. I don't fully know. Um, I don't fully know if they know it's alumni weekend, to be honest. But, um, you know, I, I think they know, obviously, the success that this program has had has been because of the players that have come before them. So, you know, we've talked about that. We continue to, to praise the people that have helped build the foundation that this team is now able to take advantage of. But, um, you know, I, I think it's it's even more fun for them once they do get past the, the playing stages and being able to reconnect with some of those alumni that maybe they didn't get to play with. You know, some of those conversations conversations are um, are really fun to listen to you know just the growth of the program and um, you know sometimes they're amazed that you know the current team gets x y and z and um, it's just fun to be able to you know again relive um, the the situations that each of them lived through in a way well it'll be an exciting weekend no doubt the coyotes take on kansas city thursday night at seven o'clock and then noon on saturday against the denver pioneers in the sanford coyotes sports center coach thanks for the time appreciate it have a great week. Good luck this week. Thank you. Hope to see everybody out there. Now, Leanne Williamson, the head volleyball coach, joining us here on the Kyle Volleyball Show. Also, big thanks to Michael Rundy for joining the show as well. I'm John Thayer. Have a great rest of your weekend. This has been the Kyle Volleyball Show, presented by Scooter's Coffee. The Kyle Volleyball Show is brought to you by Scooter's Coffee. Scooter's Coffee. Amazing drinks. Amazing people. Amazingly fast.